Hello everyone and welcome to this week's blog post on ProRPA.com. First of all, I want to apologize because it's been a couple of weeks since we ended with the UI path and it took some time to start with the Blue Prism tutorials as well. Um, the thing is, things have been really, really hectic on my end. So, I mean, uh, it, the thought crossed my mind that, you know, I shouldn't be doing this, but trust me, I wish, I wish I had a different, uh, you know, scenario, circumstances altogether. So, okay. Um, we want to start with Blue Prism uh, from this tutorial series onwards. And uh, every week, same like the last one for UiPath, we are going to um, discuss the articles in a legible sequence to understand the Blue Prism application, the capabilities, the different features it incorporates within the entire RP application. And uh, we'll automate a few, you know, use cases, a sample use cases that we'll be taking into consideration. And um, we'll go from there, right? So um, without further ado, I want to start with the Blue Prism application. Once I launched it, this is how it looks like. This is the home page. And uh, what it shows is the home tab, as per se. It's going to show you like um, how many automations you have done and uh, a pretty decent uh, dashboard, uh, an interactive one as well, where, you know, it will show you the available resources, the automations you have done so far, any like queues, the work queues that we'll be talking about pretty late, of course, um, like how is the overall volume, how much data does these queues have and um, like just to give a basic idea, a queue is like a central repository where you put the data and then you retrieve it one by one. Same as any programming language concept, whether it's Java, .NET, C++. And um, once you start retrieving that data, you do the computation, the process involved, uh, depending on that data, and you store the result or you display the result, etc. Right? So um, the home page is going to give you a pretty interactive dashboard to give you an overview of how your system is looking like in terms of the RPA. Right. But we'll be again more concerned because from the developer standpoint, we'll be more concerned with the studio, which you can see is right here. Right. And the Blue Prism Studio, right, it's divided into two major categories. One is called the process studio and the other one is called the object studio. Right. You can see the processes and the objects right here. I hope the video size is not too small. Oh, I guess didn't make much of a difference, right? So um, what you're going to do is you always uh, either create a new process or you create an extended process. Like I already have one process called trial one. So what we can do is I can either open this one or simply right click and create the new process. And this is how the new process looks like. This is what I want to talk about this week, right? About the process studio altogether. So process studio, uh, is gonna contain the workflow, the flow of whether it's data or the process flow as per se, which is catering to the business requirement, right? All the process involved in a business that you're trying to automate will be a part of this process studio. So by, process, uh, by this, what we mean is, let's say if you remember in UiPath, we talked about the, the, the demo that we talked about was the part creation process, right? That could be something different as per uh, the business that we are trying to automate the process for. So um, specific to that business, we are going to have like, you know, logging to some logging in into some uh, enterprise application, entering the user credentials and uh, um, like other subsequent steps, right? Entering some input parameters, running the report, downloading the report, emailing the report, like in, in that particular sequence, I'm just making, you know, um, stuff up here. So that particular sequence of steps to be followed to complete the process, right, is going to be a part of the process studio. And as you can see, if you've worked on Visio, Lucidchart and all those applications, um, the overall look and feel of this is pretty much the same, right? You have those workflow diagrams, the flow charts as we used to call them. And um, uh, like those, instead of just the graphical representation of the process, it's going to actually have the code to interact with the, the external application to do some computations and perform the automation. Right. So um, this is how the process studio looks like. 
and uh, you know uh, before you know starting off with any process diagram uh, let's talk more about what all different uh, like components of the blue prism of the blue prism process studio are right so first and foremost that we talk about is the menu bar right and menu bar is same as you know any other uh, ms word application ms uh, microsoft applications that you have worked on right so it includes the file option the edit option the view option all these and i'm pretty sure you understand all these uh, features to to the major extent right so zooming in zooming out and all this stuff is there so this is what menu bar contains then we have the standard toolbar so standard toolbar is this one which includes like saving and, and you know what all features you have in the menu bar you have sort of shortcuts for it like you want to print the process flow diagram right or you have some cut paste options that you want to do or undo redo if i had done some operations so all that is part of the standard toolbar right then we have the formatting toolbar as you can see formatting toolbar is like uh, making something as bold italics underlined changing the colors you know that's all those formatting capabilities like specific to the different how do i say the look and feel of the program right how it looks like doesn't much concern with the uh, with the overall functionality but many a times you have to make stuff client presentable as well right so uh, formatting toolbar comes pretty handy at that time next we're going to talk about control bar so control bar is going to have these controlling options like you know if you want to run a program then at what speed you want to run it to fast normal slow so those debugging speeds those uh, if you want to pause a running program you can do that then we have step functionalities like step in step over or um, simply just step out where in like the whole program on a particular page gets executed we are going to talk about these functionalities in more detail in subsequent blog posts right but this is what uh, control bar or the debug bar consists of then we have the stage panel so stage panel is let me um, step back a little bit the process flow diagram consists of stages right so these stages is what's going to constitute the main rpa bot that you'll be building right so these stages is what we have in here in the stage panel and all these stages have different functionalities involved with them like you know linking stage which is going to link your one program to the other like one program stage to the other the process stage right you have some looping statements some data collections or a single data item you can perform multiple calculations decision box which are standard as per the flow chart stuff right um this uh, diamond shaped box right so i'm sure um a little bit of experience definitely would have been coming handy but if not that's totally fine that's totally fine that works okay so um action stages different pages that you might have in the program etc so all these stages are incorporated within this stage panel okay and the last as we call is the main page the main panel or um, the correct terminology as per the blue prism uh, uh, the firm itself is called the process flow designer right so process flow designer is going to have like the main canvas area where you're going to perform the automation by um, dragging and dropping these stages into the main panel right so this this main canvas is called uh, the process flow designer right um another like a few more tips that i want to mention um the first and first, uh, foremost is that the first page of a program is called the main page right and this is where the execution of the rpa bot starts right if you guys know about java right uh, we use public static void main the main function is what always like whenever you start execution um in java specifically i'm saying the compiler would start looking for the main program and it, and it would start from the execution from there itself then you may have called other functions and the back and forth uh, you know going to different uh, the code of execution and then reverting back to the main and all that stuff goes on but this is the main page where the actual execution starts so you may have other pages you're going to reference to the objects as well which are going to be part of the object studio which we'll be discussing in the next week's blog post 
but um, this is how the overall execution flow of the RPA bot takes place, right? And uh, another thing, which if you guys have gone through the ProRPA.com's UiPath blog posts, you must have seen, I, have, I couldn't have been more vocal about this, use the proper naming convention as much as you could, because it really, really comes way useful when you are debugging the program, when you know um, you have to maintain a version control, even for backups, trust me. And um, I mean, to make sense to other, to make it more comprehensible to other software RPA developers, right? You have to use the naming convention. So instead of using this trial one, which is a very um, um, not acceptable name, I would rather use uh, some name which is specific to the process that I'm trying to automate, right? Like, uh, let's say if it was part creation process itself, right? Then I would have said part creation automation version 0 0.1 because I'm just starting it so I don't know um, how far I can go, right? So something like that. Th these things um, can really make a difference between, you know, a decent bot versus a super bot. So uh, please do pay heed to it. And um, this is it for this week. You know, uh, we've discussed the process studio, um, the different, the essential elements within the process studio window. And um, next week we'll be talking about the object studio. And uh, please do let me know how you felt about this video and also the blog post. If you haven't checked it out, please do. And, uh, you know, we also have the CRISPR learning book series on the video tutorials available on Amazon and Udemy and also on Skillshare. So uh, please do check them out if you want to have a thorough learning of the RPA stuff. We also came out with ServiceNow, another incident management tool, which uh, for which the book is available right now on Amazon across all marketplaces. Right. So um, let me know your thoughts. Please do subscribe to ProRPA.com and on the YouTube channel and happy automating. Thank you very much. Goodbye.